Hey, checking in. So, time of year that I'm in at the moment. It is mid-March. I have just uh, had a little break. My first break of the year. Went out with some friends to Devon, where we used to go to uni. And we had a cracking time. Really cut loose. Got boozy. Had a good one. It was awesome. And... I'm not actually feeling too worse away. Usually after big weekends like that, you're feeling a bit groggy. But we actually got decent amounts of sleep because uh, it snowed. And we were inside a lot of the time just watching Six Nations rugby, playing a few games, having fun, things like that. Now I'm back in London, getting things done, working away. And uh, yeah, good day, good first day. I mean, I had to get back on on the horse and catch up on a few things as you always do when you take time off work but all in all good day went to uh, advertising week europe watched a panel on voice that patrick givens head of Ana smart was in met some cool people there enjoying this new kind of biz dev role that i'm doing for Vayner. it's enjoyable it's good connecting the dots meeting a lot of new people often going to events and just coordinating, facilitating, teeing up the big hitters. And really, a few things crossed my mind as I was pecking away on my keyboard today, just getting stuff done. And one of them was, uh, well, a lot of them actually, were inspired by, we, uh, well, I was just reading through Crushing It, which is Gary's new book. And I was just reading through a few chapters and I actually got a little bit carried away. Started reading one or two pages more than I originally intended because I was just scanning it, just trying to pick out some useful sections that I think would be interesting for people to have a look at. Uh, But anyway, I was looking through and especially the conclusion where he talks about entrepreneurship, and that the the digital opportunity, the internet opportunity, that stuff is just cracking. I mean, if you can't get inspired by that uh, and the ability to be patient, the opportunity you have now, which I'm currently doing as best I can, is documenting what is pretty normal at the moment. I'm just work at VaynerMedia, do my day-to-day job, have a bit of fun on the weekends, see my friends, enjoy my passions, my hobbies, that's it, just enjoying the journey. Documenting that and the, and the failures and the challenges, day-to-day, just podcast, video, the odd snap story here and there. It's, yeah, it's going to be powerful, that, uh, in 10, 15 years' time, and I can already see how there are a few things even from last year where it's just going to come in handy to cross-reference Gary was talking about how he wish he'd he obviously was in, involved in wines so he wish he'd documented how he actually developed his palate around wine and also you can document how your delivery and content delivery style changes and develops because I was you know, much worse than I am now at doing this. I'm still not amazing, but I'm getting better and better uh, as time goes by. And it's becoming more normal just to be able to deliver coherently in in one fell swoop. Yeah, I bounce around a bit, but I try and stick to a main thread uh, and just deliver as much value as I can by thinking about, okay, my main listener is essentially anyone who is interested in just building a career if they're at school interested in doing the best they can in what's currently in front of them aka their exams and the things that they get measured on but then also thinking longer term as i said career and the key part that holds those two things together is one of the key skills i think you need to develop as a young person actually as anyone today uh but often i don't like advising or uh, people that might be a little older than me and, and might think they know better uh, and they probably do in some regard 
and maybe they don't in others. But uh, at the moment, my target market is definitely the people that are just a little bit younger, maybe at school, at uni, or similar age, kind of that early career stage. And it's attention investing. Where are you investing your time and attention? Absolutely crucial. Uh, I actually came up this weekend with my, my friends. We looked at my Instagram. And I actually don't, I don't follow any of, what, any, any of my friends on Instagram. Um, and I told them, I was honest. I was like, hey, I just, I don't care. Like what, and it sounds real harsh, doesn't it? I don't care about your Instagram. That's a, that's a big insult these days. <laughs> and it's just true though, because the way I see it is that the meaningful connection with my best friends you know, that inner circle, who I am very, very, very tight with and, you know, would feel like I could enjoy any kind of situation with them, tell them most things and just really cut loose and be, be my complete self around them, uh, is the main method of communication there is one, face-to-face, it's ideal, because I, I'm willing to spend time with those people because I have a bloody good time when I'm with them. So why not just spend the face-to-face time with them? And number two, if I do want to know about that IG-worthy content, I'm going to be going into the WhatsApp DM with them and spending and and investing there. Much more meaningful than just kind of passive scrolling of the feed, picking up their content. And then the the only downside to that is if you are going to scroll through the feed, yeah, you, you will have friends, but they'll, what will happen is you will take, you know, you'll, you'll get your inner circle in there, but then you'll get sloppy and you'll start adding people who aren't really in the inner circle. And that's when just a lot of like, just, just chaff, mundane rubbish comes into your feed. And then you start wasting time and then you start spending, you know, mental RAM. Again, you imagine your brain like a computer. You've only got so much RAM to store info and to spend mental currency on. And you got to be careful because if you're just consuming random crap from people who you don't really know uh, and quite frankly don't really care about if you think about it properly uh, in terms of obviously you don't want anything bad to happen to anyone I'm not saying that but what I am saying is you, you don't really on a day-to-day basis think oh I wonder how that person's doing unless they come across your radar on social and I'm just saying if you want to crack on get things done you got to limit the amount to which you're bouncing around, thinking about, oh, what if, what if, that, oh, she's got this, he's got that, they're doing that. doesn't matter at all. Just focus on what you're doing. And that's one of the best ways you can actually impact the two to three people that you spend the most time with or the six people in your friend circle. And that's the, that's the kind of ripple effect that I'm an advocate of. Instead of this... Uh, thing which has been caused by social networks which is this huge proliferation of friend networks where friendships are actually extremely weak Um, because you you need to invest you can't you can't just build a friendship from a few instagram likes and comments you can't do that Uh, and i don't care what you you know i'll argue till the cows come home with you about that um, you can't build a reliable friendship or a meaningful one just off that. And it's also, if you think about it, friendship's built on what you do in private, on how you are one-to-one. That's how you can really tell someone's your friend. When no one else is watching, how do they behave? Whereas it's human behavior to do things differently or to care about what other people think in a public situation, such as in the Instagram comments or like section, uh, because you know that, yeah, you're focusing on your relationship with one person here, but you know that there are many, many other eyeballs watching that comments and likes section. So you behave slightly differently. Anyway, I'm going to check out. I think I've left you there just with a little synopsis of my first day back after a little March break. I like doing this. I like taking a, a break around this time of year. Gives me a little refresh, a little booster. Uh, and I'm going to check out. It's actually freezing in London at the moment. It snowed over the weekend, as I said. But uh, yeah, just got to just got to get get warm ASAP, really. 
because it is absolutely freezing. Anyway, check it out. See ya.